Hello everyone. Welcome to the 1000 MCQ series of Pharmacist, Analyst and Drug Inspector exam. So let's get started to get the dream job of a government analyst. Starting off with the first question of the day, which one of the following drugs is prescribed for the treatment of Philadelphia chromosome positive patient with CML? The options are pendostatin, methotrexate, imatinib, L asperginase. Now, from the question, we can understand two things. First one is Philadelphia chromosome positive patient, and the second one is CML. Let's break it up. Here, CML stands for chronic myeloid leukemia, which is a type of blood cancer. Now, in the CML, there are two categories Philadelphia chromosome positive. Philadelphia chromosome negative. Now what is this Philadelphia? Let's find it out. We know in humans there are normal chromosome number 9 and normal chromosome number 22. Right. But when translocation takes place which means a part of this chromosome goes into this and a part of this 22 number chromosome goes into chromosome number 9. So during translocation a new type of chromosome is produced that is known as Philadelphia chromosome. It is known as Philadelphia chromosome. So it has many genes which have more affinity towards a particular enzyme. Which is that enzyme? It is tyrosine kinase. So this will help in the progress of the disease. So as to so stop the disease, what should be done? We should use drugs which are tyrosine kinase inhibitors. So these are the options that were given in the question right among this which is a tyrosine kinase inhibitor it is imatinib imatinib is a tyrosine kinase inhibitor let's learn about other options also first one is pendostatin pendostatin is adenosine deaminase inhibitor which is used in hairy cell leukemia right next one is methotrexate methotrexate inhibitor dihydrofolate reductase which is used in acute lymphoblastic leukemia and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, right? Now, imatinib. In, imatinib is tyrosine kinase inhibitor, which is used in Philadelphia chromosome positive CML, that is chronic myeloid leukemia. Next comes L-asparginase, which is used for the inhibition of protein synthesis in cells, right? It is used for acute lymphoblastic leukemia, and lymphoblastic lymphoma. Now, there can be question, what if it is Philadelphia chromosome negative chronic myeloid leukemia? So, what will the answer? For positive CML, it is tyrosine kinase inhibitor. For negative, in such condition, traditional chemotherapies are normally used. Along with that, as an add-on therapy, interferons are also used. Okay, coming to the next question. Which of the following monoclonal antibodies is prescribed for patients with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma? Is it Epseximab, Infeximab, Gentisumab or Rituximab? Here, first we should know what is non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. It is a type of cancer that mainly affects the lymphocytes. Right. So, what is the standard regimen that is followed for non-Hodgkin's lymphoma? It is R-CHOP. Please remember r Chop. Now, what is this R chop? R stands for rituximab. C stands for cyclophosphamide. H stands for doxorubicin, that is hydroxydonomycin. Doxorubicin. O stands for oncovin, that is a brand name of incristin. Oncovin. And P stands for prednisone. So, R chops, these five drugs are mainly used for non Hodgkin's lymphoma. So, what will be the answer here? It is rituximab. Now, how it is acting? It targets the CD20 antigen. Cluster of differentiation 20 antigen on the surface of B lymphocyte. Okay. Now, coming to the next question. Identify the drug which is not used. It is not used in the treatment of malaria that is caused by Plasmodium falciparum. Is it artemisin, primaquine, 
quinine or mefloquine. Now we know this plasmodium is mainly of three types: plasmodium vivax, plasmodium oval, and plasmodium falciparum. In this, plasmodium vivax and oval, these are mostly seen in the dormant state or the liver states. But plasmodium falciparum is mainly seen in the blood state. Now the question is which drug is not used for the treatment of malaria caused by plasmodium falciparum? Which means which drug is not effective against this falciparum? Which is the drug? It is primaquin. Primaquin is mainly effective in the liver stages of vivax and ovac. So, what is the mechanism? It targets the liver stages of the malaria parasite and it helps to prevent relapse also. One of the most important things that has to be noted is that whenever we are giving primaquin and the patient is having G6PD deficiency, that is glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency, there are higher chances of developing hemolytic anemia. So, this primaquin should be given very cautiously. So here what is the answer? It is primaquin. Right. Now coming to the next question. Which one of the following drugs does not act through GPCR? That is G protein coupled receptor. Is it epinephrine, insulin, dopamine or all of the above? We know epinephrine. It acts through GPCR. Right. What about insulin? It, it does not act through GPCR. It acts through Tyrosine kinase. What about dopamine? Dopamine also can act through GPCF. So, what is the answer here? It is insulin. So, insulin acts through receptor tyrosine kinase, which is different from the GPCF, that is G protein coupled receptor. Now, coming to the next question. As per the Medical Termination of Pregnancy Act and Rules, that is of 1971, the safe custody of forms is with Standing Committee. RMO, owner of the approved place or the chief medical officer. Let's see each option in detail. Now, the Medical Termination of Pregnancy Act, it is of which year? It is of 1971. The forms of this particular act should be under the custody of which person, right? First one is Standing Committee. What is the uh, function of the Standing Committee? Mainly to approve the particular facility so as to monitor it, etc. Now, what is RMO? RMO is Registered Medical Officer. One thing that should be noted is that whenever this termination of pregnancy procedure is carried out, up to 12 weeks, there is a need of a single RMO, single medical registered medical officer. But if the pregnancy is from 12 to 20 weeks, there is a need of two RMOs. Okay. Now, the third question, third option is, owner of the approved place. Yes, this person is responsible for the safe custody of forms. Now, what is the last option? Chief Medical Officer. Chief Medical Officer is also responsible for monitoring all the functions, for approving the particular place. But he does not have the custody of the forms. So, which is the answer? It is the owner of the approved place. Quinoline alkaloids are biosynthesized via which one of the following pathways? Shikimic acid pathway via the thyrosine, shikimic acid tryptophan pathway, shikimic acid cationin pathway, or shikimic acid phenylalanin pathway. Now, quinoline alkaloids, these are biosynthesized from which bio biochemical pathway? It is shikimic acid pathway. Shikimic acid pathway itself produces many types of subcategories. As you can see here, from the single shikimic acid itself, various types of compounds such as tryptophan, tyrosine, phenylalanine and folates are produced. So, from this, which pathway is used for the biosynthesis of phenylalanine? It is the tryptophan pathway. So, what will the answer? Shikimic acid tryptophan. Okay. So, the next question is a technique of using very small metal particles coated with the desired DNA in gene transfer is called microinjection, biolistic, liposome mediated or electroporation. 
So from the question, we can understand this is a very small metal particle that is coated with the DNA, that the desired DNA that we want to transfer. Okay. So what is this gene transfer procedure known as? Let's check out each option. Micro injection. Whether in micro injection we are using metal particle for the delivery? No, we are directly injecting. Right. Biolistics. In biolistics, gene gun therapy? Yes, we are using small metal particle and doing a gene transfer. In liposome mediated, liposome mediated means it is encapsulated, it is fully encapsulated, and then we are delivering. Electroporation. Here also we are using different electrical currents and techniques for the transfer of genes. So the answer will be biolistic techniques. Let's see it in detail. See, first technique is microinjection. Microinjection, what happens? There is a direct injection of DNA into the nucleus of the cell. We are directly doing a microinjection. Now, electroporation means we are using electrical currents electrical pulses so here we are creating electrical pulses and thereby creating small pores into the cell membrane from this pores the genes will get in the dna will get into the cell now liposome mediated gene transfer here liposome it is an encapsulated technique right so the encapsulated dna which is present inside the liposomes will fuse with the cell membrane and deliver the dna some other techniques are transformation. Transformation means the uptake of the naked DNA by the bacterial cell. That is known as transformation. Next term is conjugation. Conjugation means there is a direct transfer of DNA. Direct transfer of DNA between the bacterial cell to direct contact. Next one is transduction. Transduction is usually done when there are presence of virus. So here we are using virus to transfer the DNA into the cell. So these are some of the techniques that are used for the gene transfer. Coming to the next question, sildenafil is used for the treatment of one of the following disorders. Is it hypertension and angina, cardiac disorders, eclampsia or all of the above? Now sildenafil we know it is PDE5 inhibitor. It helps in vasodilation. What will the most possible answer? It is hypertension and angina. Initially, this molecule of sildenafil was produced for the treatment of hypertension as well as for angina. But due to the other effect that this molecule produced, it was highly used for which disease? For erectile dysfunction as sildenafil act by PDE5 inhibition. Coming to the next question, which of the following indicator is used in complexometric titration? Is it crystal violet, neuroxide, eosin or methyl orange? Let's see each one in detail. Crystal violet. Crystal violet is used for acidometry or acid titration. Muroxide is it used for complexometry titration? Eosin is mainly used for staining purpose. Methyl orange, it is also used for acid dehydration for the color shift. Right. So what will the answer? It is muroxide. There are many other type of indicators that are used for complex hydration. Let's check it out. Some of the examples are ereochrome black tea, calcine, curcumin, fast sulfone black, hematoxin, xylenol orange, etc. Now, coming to the last question of the day. Sulfur dioxide 0.15% is used in the manufacturing of hard gelatin capsules to Is it to impart strength to the capsules? To increase or improve the flexibility of the capsule shell? Opacify the shell or prevent decomposition? We know sulfur dioxide can act as a preservative. So what is the most perfect answer? It will be to prevent the decomposition. So, sulfur dioxide 0.15% is mainly used in the hard gelatin capsule so as to prevent the decomposition. Hope you enjoyed the video. This is the IMS Pharmacist exam crash course and this is a course 
for the Kerala Analyst Grade 3 examination. So let's get ready with Setu Satsavi Pharma Tutorials. Thank you.